Okay, so we're going to cover realtor safety today, um, just because of some incidents that happen in the parking lot and around the building, right? So I want to go over kind of the class expectations, kind of what you guys want to cover. Um, this I kind of threw together yesterday. I normally teach a three-hour class, but this I kind of threw together just for us and what we're going through. Um, topics to cover, classroom versus reality. You know, honestly, you're in a class. It's not real world. Things still happen out there. Um, what you learn in a class may not apply to every situation, right? Um, and then we're going to focus on incident, incidents and best practices for us related to kind of what's going on around us, okay, specific to the situations here. <clears throat> Overview of the class, I kind of just did a quick outline. Um, we're going to focus on situational awareness, but do a quick introduction, situational awareness. I want to do a couple class exercises to kind of keep, get you thinking a different way of what's going on than what we normally do. Um, I want to talk to you about distractions uh, being difficult. Um, what do you carry? It's not what you think, but I want you to keep that in mind. Public perception and how predictable you are. Okay. Um, first one, introduction on Mike Wong. I do teach realtor safety, and a lot of people ask me, you're a commercial guy, why are you teaching realtor safety? There's a few things that have happened to me um, before I got into real estate, and now that I am in real estate, there's other things that happened to me. But more importantly, a few things happened to my friends last year, and they ran into some weirdos out there, and they ran into some, some situations that they couldn't get out of. And so um, I started looking for a class, and I started getting more involved, and I saw how difficult it was to find a class. I saw how difficult it was to, um, not all police departments, but I found it difficult for certain police departments to respond and do any action or take any action against any individuals. Um, Let's start with perception of us, right? We know what we do every day. What does everybody else think we do? They think we make lots of money. They think we drive really nice cars. Uh, we have access to more money, like ATM machines, and we have access to people's homes with money, right? Does that make us a target, right? Um, we have nice things, LV purses, jewelries, Rolex, MacBooks, right? We typically carry nice things on us. Um, the next generation of realtors is more of a flex culture where they like to show off on social media all the things that they're doing. Um, so that makes you a target, right? You're advertising yourself. And just be conscious of that, um, even the way that you advertise your life personally. Um, be alert and be vigilant. So we come to the office every day, we're used to it, it's routine, right? We know where we're gonna drive, we know what we're gonna have for breakfast, we know our schedule, we're predictable. And that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, we probably drive the same route. We park in the same parking space. Some of us pay for parking spaces and park in our same parking spot, right? Because we're comfortable, um, we follow the same habits. But because of that, because you drive to this building every day, do you notice anything out of place when you come in? No, because you're not paying attention, right? That goes back to the situational awareness. Um, you notice a different car in the parking lot, somebody that's not normally parked to you, next to you, you pull in. Right? Do you notice um, a car park that there's a guy leaning against it, hanging out, just kind of looking around, talking on his cell phone? Right? The minute you pull into a parking lot, you should be looking around for what's around you before you get out of your car. Okay? You, guys are in you guys are in full control when you're in your car. You can drive away. You don't have to park and get out. You see something wrong, you can leave. Right? You're in control. But once you get out, you're losing less control. So you want to take that time when you're driving in, maneuvering around the parking lot, take a look around. I mean, even if you drive a little slower, even if instead of driving directly to your parking spot, you drive up in front of the building and back around, why? Because you've got to walk into the building. What's wrong with looking at the parking space in the parking lot before you park to see where you're going to walk, right? It, it only takes a second. I mean, if you're on the phone, kind of ask you to get off their phone because you're not paying attention to what's around you, you're paying attention to the person you're talking to. But if you start looking around without distractions, without looking at your phone, things like that, you'll notice a lot of different things going on. Um, this is meant to be on a later slide, but what happens if you notice something? 
I mean, if you're in danger or you see something going on, maybe you call the office, maybe you call the police, say, hey, there's somebody downstairs, it doesn't look right, it doesn't look like they belong there. If you see an incident happening, um, you see a robbery, you see something going on, can you honk your horn? Can you set off your panic alarm? If it happens to you, can you set off the remote on your alarm? Is that a good thing or bad thing, right? The class isn't gonna tell you if it's good or bad. I can't tell you if it's good or bad. It's gonna be situational. It's gonna depend on what what's going on. If the guy's got a gun pointed at me, probably not gonna set off my alarm and make him mad, right? I wanna get him away from me as quick as possible. I wanna get away from him as quick as possible. <clears throat> um, always be aware of your surroundings, right? So, this is all out of order. Um, let's do a quick exercise. What I want to do is, everyone, obviously looking at the screen, right? Stay focused up here, stay focused on me. From your memory and from what you did walking in, how many people are in the room behind you? You know? Not only how many people are in the room behind you, where's your quickest exit? How long, how fast can you get to that exit? Right? We're not aware of what's going on, right? Because we're in our comfort zone. We're used to being in here, we're used to training, we're used to being relaxed, but you have to think about that. Not likely here, but in um, mass shooter situations, in church, in office buildings, you wanna know where your exits are. You wanna know who's around you. You wanna know who's a threat. You wanna know if there's a stranger in the room, things like that. So when you start being conscious, you start doing these exercises of consciously being aware of who's around you all the time, how many people there are, where the exits are, you, you start to develop a different mindset, right? Um, one, thing, one thing I like to think about is where I'm sitting is if there's somebody I don't know, or if I'm sitting in a restaurant, I'm, face, I'm always facing the door. I want to see who's coming in towards me, right? I want to have my back against the wall. Because I know nobody can sneak up, sneak up behind me. But I also want to know how quickly somebody can approach me if they were going to attack me. They say a typical attacker can approach about five feet per second. One, two, about five to ten feet. Okay. So I always kind of keep a distance, social distance, but defensive distance, right? Um, you know, what are your what are your options if you're if you're in a room? What are your options if you're here? What, if you're, what are your options if you're in the parking lot? Um, where can you run? Where can you hide? Where can you take cover? Where can you get away, right? Where, is, where will that criminal stop where they don't want to be seen, okay? So those, those are things just to be aware of when you're out, right? Most likely, one, one tip I teach in my class is make eye contact, okay? It's weird. There's a psychological statistic that when you make contact with the criminal, they tend to move on to the next person. Why? In their mind, they're afraid they're being identified. They think I'm remembering your characteristics, short hair, brown hair, five feet seven, this weight, black jacket, blue jeans, right? That's what they think because they're committing the crime. They're thinking you're the target. They're, you make eye contact, they think you're looking at them and you're gonna remember. Psychologically, they just pass, majority of the time. Okay. Criminals are a little bit different these days. They, they're a little bit bolder. Um, but typically, eye contact works. Um, this exercise for just being conscious of what's around you, you can, it applies everywhere. It applies you know, restaurants, uh, office buildings. When I stay in hotels, I'm conscious of where my room is at. Well, where the fire exit's at, if I'm gonna be blocked in a corridor by any strangers, anything like that, um, I wanna have more than one way out. Um, I wanna have good visibility out my window um, of my vehicle, that's my escape route, right? Where's proximity of my hotel room, my vehicle, if I need to just get away. Um, you know, be aware of your exits, distances, your options, um, and things can happen anywhere. Right? We're here today because things are happening here. Um, a couple weeks ago, there was a sh random shooting inside Raw Sushi in Highland Village. Some guy just walked in, popped off a shot, thought he was going to rob everybody in the restaurant. Okay. People were just out having sushi. I read in the news last night that somebody from Sugarland was followed from the bank. And I think they drove into Midtown or somewhere. 
Um, they're followed to their brother's house. It was a Yukon Denali, a new black SUV. It's probably a 60, 80,000 R SUV. Guy got, got out, pointed a gun. The person just threw his money. I mean, he already knew what was happening, right? So banks, banks and drive throughs are common targets. Um, let's do another exercise. Uh, vehicles, parked and driving, right? There's really no wrong or right, wrong or right answer. Um, but do you sit alone in your car often on your phone looking down? Right? Are you aware who's around you? You're not even looking. You're, you're doing this. Right? That's my biggest pet peeve with my friends. They do this when they get in the car. Hey, we were here. We were there. They start sharing their photos. And it's me. I like to sneak up on them in their blind spot and knock on their window and just scare the crap out of them. Right? It's, it, it seems funny, but if I were a thief or a robber, bang, bang. You're dead. Bang, bang. Open your door. I want your car. I want your purse. I want your phone. Right? It's that easy when you're distracted. So, you know, what I always tell people, wait till you get home. What do you get somewhere else? What do you get inside a place? There's other people around you and watching and moving around. Then do that. Don't sit in your car and do that right after an event. Right? Or don't play on Facebook while you're sitting in your car. Um, I, I call that the fish tank analogy. Right? You're the fish in the tank. And everybody out there can see you, see right through your windows. Windows on cars nowadays are bigger and bigger than ever, right? You've got this huge window, and it, it's not any protection, it's just glass. But you're sitting there looking down, and everybody else around you can see you, okay? I'm going to cut off my notes. Um, again, kind of before you park, drive around, look around, see what's going on, look at where you're going to walk in, look at your route. Um, Exercise three is kind of open spaces, parking lots, malls, things like that. When you're out of your vehicle, you're exposed, you're open, right? As long as you're in your car, you have control. You can even hit the criminal if you want to with your car, defending yourself. Legally, you can, okay? There's repercussions for doing that. But as long as you're in your car, you can always leave. You have control. You don't have to stop. You don't have to get out. Once you're out of your car, you lose a lot of the protection and control that you normally have. So you want to be aware of what's going on around you, right? You want to be aware of people kind of sitting there in the car looking around. Um, you want to be aware of corners. You want to be aware of um, people loitering, right? If something looks out of place, a car doesn't belong there. It's not in its normal spot that it should be. Um, shopping malls. Very rare something will happen to you in a large public area. But right now, it's trending that it'll happen to you when you're, getting, when you're going home, when you're stopping somewhere else. Um, the, there's another report I read that a female was shopping at the Galleria. She went to all the nice stores, and she's carrying two arms full of luxury items she bought, right? And you have the brands on the bag. So everybody sees what she bought. Went in her car. She went shopping in other places, Highland Village and all around town, Rice Village. They followed her for three hours watching her accumulate everything. And then they robbed her. Where do they rob her? Home, in her driveway, not in public. While she's accumulating everything and there's witnesses and there's cameras and there's everything out there, they waited for the opportunity. So what I want you to think about is don't be an easy target. Don't be in an easy opportunity. I used to believe that if I drive around in circles and waste their time and seem like I don't know where I'm going, they're gonna quit following me. To follow somebody for three hours, that's a lot of patience. But that was a big payday. Right? That was a mistake. Okay, yeah, I see you shopping. I see what you're accumulating. It's worth following you. If I see you go to an ATM, I don't know how much money you have. If I see you just randomly, I don't know what I'm going to get. Right? But if you see somebody that's a target, you kind of know. Um, to my analogy, right? what's the first picture? Recognize it? The building. We've got a really nice new lobby. And this is a nice shot. I took this around 10 o'clock. Anybody seeing the parking lot? It's dark out there, right? Can you see to the end of the parking lot at night? But they can see us. Right? When you walk right through here, they can see you coming out. They can time your steps. They know they look around the big look around the parking lot. They can probably see your maybe one or two cars. They know how far you have to walk. So you just became predictable. Okay, fish tank analogy. That's our fish tank. Okay. Um, vehicle, typical realtor vehicle, Lexus, they can see you sitting in there. 
here's a distracted person. Right. Technically, you're in their blind spot. And you, would you notice me if I walked up to your vehicle this way to carjack you? Because you're looking at your phone, you're programming your GPS, you're looking at your notes, right? Do all that before you get in your car. The good thing about our building in the daytime, a lot of people, we walk out, we're on our phones. Stop doing that. We've got the nice lobby. Make the phone call, finish it before you get out the building because you're not looking left or right. Or you're holding a phone like this and you've got a blind spot over here. Okay. So finish your calls, finish your distractions before you walk out. Take a look before you walk out. Okay. I'll go over a story later, but take a look before you walk out so you know what you're walking into. Um, anybody stay and work late at night? A few of us, right? Again, don't walk in the fish tank. Criminals call it the box because you're giving them the perfect opportunities of, to observe you. Don't walk that way. Take the, take the stairs, go downstairs. We have side doors and side doors have glass. So you can see straight out and you can kind of see to the side. Criminal, especially who doesn't know this building, they're looking for the easy target. The easy target is going to walk through here alone at 10 o'clock at night on their phone or not paying attention. If you walk around the side, go out the side door, stop before you get to the corner of the building and look in the parking lot. See where your car's at. See if there's anybody else out there. See if there's anybody moving. See if there's a mysterious car out there with a the light on. Most good thing, most things today, most lights, most cars are equipped with automatic lights that turn on at night. Dummies forget to turn those off in the park. Okay, so if you see a car parked with their lights on, they're sitting there for a while and you're on the side door, just come back inside. Don't have to walk out, right? If something feels wrong, turn around, okay? Um, go with your gut. So not only our building, but what about when we go out? Everybody goes to gas stations, right? We need gas. You ever go in to buy soda or anything or you just pump gas and go? Anybody? Am I the only person who drinks soda anymore? <laughs> but notice gas stations now, it's all glass in front. You can see all the way in. Okay. Again, don't be distracted. Right? We go to a gas station, we're at the gas pump, we're on our phones, we're checking an email real quick, we're going to make a quick phone call, I'm going to run in and grab something. Go, 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 it's our lifestyle, right? We forget to slow down and look. Maybe about, was I in real estate then? I don't think I was in real estate. So I grew up in a grocery store, it's kind of why I teach this, because a lot of bad things happen at my grocery store, my family's grocery store. My dad always hated me going to convenience stores. We ran a grocery business. We knew what can go wrong, right? My dad always told me, don't go in the stores, just get your gas and go. Me being young and arrogant, pull up, hop out of my car, fill up my tank, run into a store, I'm just gonna grab a soda. I wasn't paying attention. One day I walked right into a gun pointed at my face. So I was in a hurry. Walked into a corner store, opened the door, looked up, walked into the middle of the robbery. Guy turned around and pointed the gun at me. Dumb, one of the dumbest mistakes of my life that I got to live and tell about, because what if he just pulled the trigger? I was moving in a hurry, right? But I wasn't looking, and it was so obvious. Big, huge windows. I mean, how could I miss it? I just wasn't thinking. I wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't mature yet, right? So think about that when you go out. Look ahead, right? It just takes a couple extra seconds, but it can save you so much grief. Um, back to no distractions, right? You want to get to your car, building, your home, your store. You want to get to wherever you want to go without anything interrupting you, especially a bad guy. But you want to make it harder for that bad guy to pick you as a target, right? Be aware of what's around you. Not, not being on your phone. Um, put this photo up. She's on her phone. She's got her earphones in. Does she hear, she hear what's going on around her? Probably not, right? Does she even know that this guy's there? Not that he's a threat, but she, does she, is she even aware of the people around her? Um, is she aware of where she's walking to and somebody may be standing there? Or if there's a car coming by, that's gonna make a turn that she's not aware of. Um, simple, simple thing, right? Phones are great but they can distract us. And I'll explain another thing about cell phones 
um, another slide. But you know, keep calm and always be alert. Right? We don't know when anything's going to happen. Honestly, a class is not going to stop anything from happening. What we're just trying to do is be aware, be more conscious, so we can avoid things, so we can make it harder. Uh, I'm not suggesting you live in fear. I'm not suggesting you be vigilant, but be alert and expect the unexpected. Who gets up every morning and expects to be robbed in the parking lot? Me, right? But have I thought about it enough that if it does happen to me, I know how I'm going to react to multiple situations where if I'm just going to say, fine, here's my wallet, leave me alone, or if I have to fight, do I know what I'm going to do if I have to fight? Um, that goes to having a plan, right? Can you use a panic button on your car? Can you escape? Can you defend yourself from an abduction? Okay. There's a statistic, in my, again, in another class I teach, there's a statistic. If you are abducted, chances of you being found or recovered are very, very small. Okay. You want, if something happens and they try and take you, you want to fight not want to be taken. Okay. Houston is, um, I used to volunteer, Houston was a number two, number one hub in the United States for human trafficking. It's still up there. It's getting worse. Okay. You don't want to be taken. Okay. You want to do everything you can to stay in your place. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Think about your next destination right, before you get there. Where, where's your route? What do you have to walk through? Um, what's the parking situation like? Who's outside? How long is the walk inside? Things like that. What are you carrying? What do you look like? Um, don't, be, don't allow yourself to be identified as an easy target. Are you distracted on your phone? Um, are you on a call? Are you, you know, mindlessly wandering around out there, right? Not paying attention to what's going on. Are you jogging with your phones at? On a trail, on a trail. Trail's predictable. I know you're gonna go in a circle. I just gotta pick my spot where I'm gonna get you, right? So don't be a pre predictable, easy target. Just be aware of what's going on around you. Um, what valuables are visible? How are you dressed? Right. Um, there's no real dress code in real estate, right? We all dress differently. But, you know, some people, they wear high heels. Okay, that's fine. Can you run in high heels? can't somebody just stop me in the hallway and said I'll stab somebody with the high heel good because you're gonna have to do something right because those things are either gonna stop you or they're gonna help you so if you got it that's your only choice that's what you've got to do okay um if confronted if you're robbed where are they taking from you you thought about that before you go out every day I used to wear a Rolex I was proud of it worked my tail off for it it's my dream watch First one I ever bought, wore it everywhere. And I was happy when people noticed it was a Rolex. But then I thought about it, man, I worked my butt off for that. First one I ever bought myself. I'm not gonna lose it to somebody I don't know who wants it more than I do, right? So I stopped wearing it. Um, I'm aware of how I look when I go out, if I'm going to be an easy target or not, if I'm distracted, if I'm walking slowly, if I, Here's a tip from bad guys. If you're walking like you're hurt, you're walking slow, you're walking like something's wrong, you're an easy target because you can't run, right? They can easily catch you. From an even worse bad guy, I know that you can't fight. If you're walking around with a bad leg or bad knee and I've got to hurt you, I'm going to kick your knee, break your knee. Then I can have my way. I can, grab, I can pull everything out of your pockets. Right. So think about how you look when you're walking outside. If you're walking with urgency, you're walking with confidence, you get to your vehicle and you go, most likely they're going to pass you up unless they have a reason to follow you. Um, talked about it earlier. What do you carry? I like this commercial. What's in your wallet? Everybody pay attention to that one. What's in your wallet? <clears throat> What does our wallet have? Typically cash, credit cards, receipts, personal information. Your driver's license with your address on it, your name on it. Um, photos of loved ones. Do you want some stranger having that? Yeah. 
Maybe I'm getting upset talking about all this stuff. <laughs> um, what's in your wallet, right? So here's a, after I walked into that robbery, the trick that I learned. I get out of my car, this is my wallet. My cash, my ID, everything in it. Leave it in the car. It's still stuck to me. Doesn't mean I have a lot of money. Okay? It's just got a lot of receipts in there. But I carry this wallet. Get yourself one of these. Ladies, men, get yourself one of these. It's just a card wallet. Okay? This wallet has one good credit card in there I use all the time. It has two credit cards I've reported stolen. Mike, why are you carrying your own credit cards you reported stolen? And it's got a flap in the middle with cash. Okay. If I get robbed, if I walk into another robbery and somebody says, give me your wallet, my ID and everything is not in there. Anything you can identify me with is not in there. You get this. You get credit cards, my name on it, I want you to use because they reported stolen, and hopefully they have security footage of you. You'll be on camera. That's my hope. There's one good one in there they can use, and it's, it's, it's got a very low limit, so they can't run it like crazy. And there's cash in there. Okay, I've got cash in the middle. I'll show them the cash. Hey, there's 100 bucks in here. That's all I've got. They take it. They're happy. They think that's my wallet. I live another day. I get back in my car. They don't know where I live. They don't know anything about me besides Michael Wong. You look that up on, online, you'll run into 20 or 30 Michael Wongs in Houston. Get yourself one of these. Be conscious of what you carry, right? Ladies, you carry purses. You carry everything in there. Stop carrying your ID and your purse. Carry it somewhere else. Keep it in your pocket. Keep a separate wallet. If somebody's going to take something from you, give them something that's worthless, right? Um, GPS. What happens if you're carjacked? Get your car, right? If I get in your car and I get on your GPS and I say, take me home, will it take me to your driveway? Okay. I want everybody tonight, change your address to the office. Change your address to First Colony Mall if you live around here. So you don't need your GPS taking you to your driveway. You need it taking you somewhere close by home. You'll, by now, you should know how to get there, right? Change your home address and your GPS because if I carjack you and I push, take me home, I'm going to drive in your driveway. I'm going to punch all the buttons on your ceiling. I'm going to open your garage door. I'm going to walk in your house because I've got your keys. Very, very simple mistake, right? Um, I'm guilty. I have my garage remotes, remotes program, but I program my GPS to something else. My insurance with my address is locked up somewhere. So if they dig around, they have, they have to really find it or know where it's at to figure out where I live. Um, I drive a Jeep, and it's at the dealership quite a bit because I abuse my vehicles. But I've got a lifetime warranty, so I always get loaner cars. And right now, it's hard to get a loaner car. So sometimes a manager will give me his car because he knows I'm only going to have it for a day. And one time, he just told me, hey, your car's not ready. Keep it overnight. I'm from, I'll see you in the morning. Um, but I was out eating with friends and I got in the car and I said, hey, I wonder if I can do something. I hit, go home. It took me to his townhouse. And I started pushing the buttons and it opened his garage. I called him up. I said, hey, are you sure my truck's gonna be ready tomorrow? He goes, yeah. I said, hey, I like your mountain bike. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, I'm outside in front of your garage and the door's open. I'm glad you gave me your car and not a total stranger, but unprogram your home address. You, that's, a, that's also a big scam with rental cars. I don't know why people do that in rental cars. They'll program their rental car. It's okay to put your radio stations in, but don't program your address. Don't program your remotes in a rental car, even if you have it for a week. Just go through the extra trouble of, you know, walking through your front door or carrying a separate remote. Don't ever program it in a roll car. So you don't know who's getting that car after you, right? Any questions so far? I know I'm going kind of fast.
There's the IT security guy at HAR. Um, he brought up a good point a while back. There were actually, when you go out to places, there's free cell phone chargers and you plug in. There's actually chargers that are downloading your information. At one point, the FBI found cables on Amazon from China that had some sort of programming in the actual plug itself that would download the data and send it somewhere. Okay, so I don't even, I like to bring my own cables when I plug into a car, a rental car. I don't, if there's a cable there, I never use it. I, I don't use cables in public because you don't know what they're getting, right? They're, they're obviously getting who you are. They're getting your phone number, but think about your photos on there. Think about your family on there, right? Not to mention your banking information and all that if they can, if they can hack that. So we talked about cell phones, right? Everybody has a cell phone. All of these are expensive now. Right? What, what's everybody paying for a cell phone? You have to buy it outright. But they're, I mean, they're like a thousand dollars, right? Thieves want these. They can wipe them and sell them in Mexico. They can sell them anywhere they want and sell them on eBay, Craigslist, Amazon. Um, these are more valuable now than the cash we carry because we don't carry cash. We carry cards. We use Apple Pay, right? We use Google Pay. These are more. These are more valuable now, okay? Um, we communicate with friends and family. We use them to do bank, bank transfers. We take photos, right? Is everybody familiar with the ICE feature on their phone? The ICE feature? Okay. I don't, so I'm not a tech savvy guy, but at one point, if you ever got into an accident, there's something that happened to you, there's supposed to be a way for somebody to just be able to pick up your in case of emergency contacts tag somebody with ice on that and it calls them bypassing the lock on your phone now they may have changed it the reason why i'm glad if they did change it is because say i rob you in the parking lot i get your phone right and, and it's unlocked like anybody can access it right maybe you have kids that you hand your phone to so you can play games and you don't keep a lock well i get your phone and it's unlocked i go through your ice contacts and i find your child and i find pictures of your child I see your social media and I know your child's name. I call your child and say, your mom's been in a bad accident. I'm a coworker from work. She's asked me to pick you up. I need to get you there because she may not make it. What just happened? She gave it to them. Right? These are valuable. Use your, use your locks on it. Okay? Either fingerprint, security code, um, I don't, I don't have a personal photo on a screensaver. I have a picture of a building. I don't want them to identify anybody that's important to me. I don't want them to identify me. Okay, I don't want them to look at my phone and remember what I look like. I can remotely erase my phone once it's gone, or I can track it as long as it stays on. But I don't want anything on here that they can pick somebody out in my life and get to. Okay. So I don't have ice contacts on my phone. I have it on me in an emergency you open my wallet it's going to say call my parents it's going to say call my cousin um but they're not going to call for my cell phone and pretend it's me or pretend i was in an accident pretend anything um, not only that right we bank on our phones or our lives depend on our phones now um treat them treat them like they're important but they can also be used against us right? just keep that in mind because most of the time you get robbed you're going to hand everything over Right? You want to move on. You want to go on with life. Um, it's got cut off a little bit. I'm, I'm stealing this from the class I teach. Don't tell them I did that. Um, but no matter what, it's up to you. Right? You're your first line of defense. You've got to make a decision that, hey, I'm going to be more conscious. I'm going to be a harder target. I'm going to defend myself if I have to. I'm going to do what it takes to survive another day. Surviving another day doesn't necessarily mean fighting with a robber, right? It could just be, here's my wallet, right? I teach a class on self-defense, but I have a throwdown wallet if I need to throw down my wallet, right? Every situation is different. Um, there's a lot of different types of self-defense, whether it's, you know, martial arts, whether it's weapon, um, you know, it's running them over with your car, using what's accessible. Um, trust your gut. Right? God gave it to you for a reason. 
Okay. Now that I'm older, I trust it more. I walked into a lot of stupid things when I was younger. Um, I've, been, I've even done it recently. Um, trust your instincts, experiences, and knowledge. If something doesn't feel right, leave or remove yourself from the area before the situation even has an opportunity to begin. What do I say when you're in your car? You have complete control, right? You can leave. Even if you're in a building, even if you're somewhere out there, you see a confrontation, you hear some yelling in the parking lot, walk back inside. Okay. Three years ago, I was craving French toast and crispy hash browns at 11.30 at night. So I got dressed. I went to the Denny's right down the street. You probably walk there from here, right? It's, it's maybe a stoplight over. 11.30 at night, I'm sitting there. There's the waitress, there's a cook, and then there's this girl sitting by herself eating. And I order my food, and I'm eating, and I'm eating. I finish my food, I pay. And she noticed during the time I was sitting there, she was looking at me, and she called somebody. Some guy showed up who looked like her boyfriend. I'm like, oh, she's probably waiting on her boyfriend. They're sitting there. I notice they're watching me, and something goes off in my head. I said, no, I'm just, just crazy. I'm paranoid. It's 11.30 at night. Let me eat and go. Get up, I wait for the cashier or wait for the waitress to come so I can pay my tab. And the guy gets up too. Again, something's telling me something's wrong. Right? This is weird. Why would he pay at the same time I'm paying? They're just sitting there. Mike, don't be judgmental. You're crazy, you're paranoid. I turn around, I start walking out the door, and he starts walking behind me. By then, I'm kind of thinking, okay, something could be wrong. And I know something's wrong, but I keep walking. And I walk out to the parking lot, and the guy's right behind me. And there's another car parked out there looking at me. Crap, I just walked into something I knew better than I should have walked into. Right? So, can't turn around to the building because he's blocking my way back in the entrance. All I can do is get to my car. What's this car out here going to do? So, I kept walking, acting like I didn't know anything. I think, well, maybe he'll just hit me over the head. I get to my car, take out my key, unlock my door. I turn around. He's probably about three or four feet from me. I said, hey, I don't want any problems. I tossed him my keys, which he wasn't expecting. Expect the unexpected, right? Man, this guy's just throwing me his car keys. He's going to give me his car. I even opened the door for him. Put my hands up where he can see it. Hey. Take my car. I don't really have any cash on me because I was carrying my wallet with my ID. Rather than take my car, we can track my car. I don't want him to know where I live. So he's looking at me like, man, are you, you're really just giving it up that easy. Yeah. So he walks towards my car, open the door for him. As soon as he starts to get inside, I shove my door and kick his knee. And I shoved my door into him so many times, I bent the hinges on my door. And the guy was crumpled on the ground. I kept slamming my door into him and I was yelling. But I didn't know what to do, right? I'd put myself in that situation. And did I have to react that way? No, but I didn't want him to get in my car. I didn't know what these other guys were going to do behind me. Now, he eventually fell on the ground. He was yelling. The girl came out. She ran over to him, called me crazy. And the people got out of the car and they dragged him in the car and took off. And I called the police. I said, here's the video vehicle description. I couldn't read the license plate. But what could have happened? And I could have been robbed. I could have been hit over the head. I could have been shot. Who knows? Right. But at that time, I started making the decision, okay, this is all I have left to do. I put myself here. I walked here. How am I going to defend myself? And my thought process was let him have what he wants. And then something inside of me went off and said, no way. I'm tired of it. He has no weapon. I have a chance to defend myself. His guard is down because I opened the door for him. I'm going to break his knee. And I'll face the people in the car because now I'm in my car. Right? I can just push my button and ram them. I can grab a weapon out of my car and do whatever I want to them. Right? But that night I wasn't thinking ahead. That night I wasn't thinking about my path to my car. That night I wasn't thinking about what I was going to do. I could have turned around and just walked back in the restroom. Of the building. I thought like he was following me. Called the police from the restroom. Sat back down at my table and refused to go outside. Right? 
So even here, we know stuff is happening around us all the time. It ha we, we hear it on the news, right? We hear how it happens. Think about those situations and what you would do in that situation. That's crazy, right? Is everybody, that's a little different to hear something on the news and say, what would I do? Believe it or not, my dad used to ask me those questions growing up. What would you do, Mike? How would you react? Because we were facing those situations in grocery store growing up, right? So now that I'm an adult, I've thought through a lot of scenarios. I've thought through a lot of things that happen on television. If it's on TV, it's happening a lot. That's why they're reporting it, right? So think it through. Um, what is your mindset when you walk out there? I won't be a victim. I won't be a target. I'm going to get to where I'm going. Know your limits. Some things we can't, sometimes we can't stop it, right? They've got a gun pointed at you. You're not going to, you don't have time to pull out a gun. You don't have time to run. You don't have time to do anything. Let them have the wallet, right? I thought about it. Yeah, you can have my money and have my wallet. You're getting my throwdown wallet. I'm not getting my real wallet. Anybody listening better not mug me and ask for my real wallet. <laughs> okay. Um, ultimately, your goal is to survive and protect you and your family, whoever you're with. Right. The shorter these incidents happen, the more likely you are to walk away. The longer it goes on, the more that can go wrong. Right. When I walked into that convenience store and that gun pointed out my face, first thing I did is I put my hand up. I said, hey, you can have my money. I'm going to reach for my wallet. I'm going to give it to you. Pulled out my throw down wallet and I threw it away from me because I want, he's pointing a gun at me. If I throw the wallet over here, I want him to move that way. I don't want a gun trained at me. I don't want to get pointed at me, especially by a nervous robber. Um, this store was on the corner of Bel Air and um, I think it's Gary Ashford. It's the Popeye's Chicken. It's an orange building with Firestone behind it. There's a police station three minutes away. Pretty bold, right? Rob a convenience store by a police station. So walked into that robbery and I'm kind of looking around. And there's a guy running around in the back grabbing things. There's another guy behind the counter and there's a gunman with his gun on me. And kind of looking and the guy behind the counter is like grabbing cigars and cigarettes. And he's like holding like this, you know, grabbing a big pile. And I'm like, are you robbing the store for cash? Or they really want, want the valuable things. Um, so I just yelled, hey, get a trash bag, grab the trash can, fill it up with all the cigarettes you want. I, know, I was an accomplice, right? I Grocery store owner was mad when the cops came. He told him how to rob me and steal all my cigarettes. <laughs> told the guy, get trash bags, grab everything you want and get out. Why? Cops are three minutes away. I don't want to be a hostage when the cops get there. I don't want to get shot because they're spooked, right? They're nervous because things are taking so long. I've been robbed. I know what they want. So I told him, hey, the quickest way to do it, grab the trash can, throw everything you want in there and go. Um, you want things to end quickly. You, you don't want a robber hanging hanging around asking you for more, right? You want them to go away quickly, especially if they have a weapon on you and you don't. Um, this is probably the best advice I've ever gotten before in my life. Change the way I think, and it's why I'm trying to change the way you think. Think like a criminal. Okay. Look for opportunities to exploit weaknesses and things that will make you recognize them. Didn't type it right, but that will make you recognize them and improve yourself. Right? Once you start thinking like a criminal, you start looking at a building, you start looking at people and say, how can I take them down? How can I get in that building? How can I get in that house? You're going to start recognizing weaknesses. You'll start seeing things in other people that you maybe didn't know you had yourself. And you're going to start thinking about how to improve that. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we're in real estate, right? We show buildings, we show homes, we show everything out there. Um, I'll go into it a little bit, but I shared in my other class. When I go somewhere, building a home, even sometimes I come to the office, I drive around a little bit more than I should. So I'm looking to see if there's anything out there around that's not supposed to be there. If I'm driving to a house or I'm driving to a building, I'm looking to see if there's broken windows. Looking to see if the gate's broken, the door's broken, the locks are broken. Okay, I want to know what I'm walking into. So just a tip when you're out there, when you're prepping for your open house, Look around for little things that are broken. Look around, look at the neighbor's house, look at the neighborhood, look at how you're going to get out of there. 
Okay, look at the back gate. Look at your back door. Look at your exits. Okay. Um, bank juggling. So everybody hears about bank juggling, right? We know what it is. You go to an ATM, you go to the bank, and you're being followed, and you're a prime target because they assume you have cash. Okay. Signs and what to look for. Park spotter cars. Somebody parked in the, in the hard notice. Somebody parked across the street or in a different parking lot. And you're driving to the bank again. I drive slow. I know where I'm going. I know where the ATM's at, but I like to look inside of every car I'm passing when I'm going to that ATM. Okay. There's somebody I notice in the car, I automatically start um, speaking the license plate number myself. Okay. If something doesn't feel right, I stop, I turn around, I leave. I'm in control. Nothing says I have to go to the ATM and grab money that very second. Okay. Something doesn't feel right, I'll get it somewhere else. Um, what do I look for in cars? Somebody sitting in there watching, right? Are they parked unusual? They parked at a weird angle or they're not in their lines or not in a parking spot. They're in the middle of a parking lot by themselves in a building that's being built or vacant. Right? What's that car doing there? Do they have a license plate on the car or they have temporary tags? It's another problem in Houston, right? Temporary tags if you're watching the news. How many people are inside the car? Are they talking to another vehicle on a cell phone? There are multiple cars. Um, at the drive through you pull up in that ATM, are you being blocked in? Is there a car behind you, a car in front of you? What's your plan in your, your next stop? Where are you going after that? Coming to the office and exposing yourself in the parking lot or leaving your vehicle where it can be broken into? Okay. What to expect? You can be followed. Your car may be broken into. You can even be bumped into in traffic. They want to fake an accident so you'll get out of your car so they'll rob you. Um, you may be robbed by force. So you want to think ahead. So anybody hear about the nurse who worked at the hospital in Richmond? I can't think of the name of the hospital. My ex-girlfriend used to work there. Um, she was getting off her shift, 6 o'clock in the morning. She drives a nice brand new Mercedes, pulled out on Highway 90. Somebody bumped into her. Traffic light. Small bump. But 6 a.m. in the morning, she just finished her graveyard shift, Oak Bend Hospital. She finished her graveyard shift, my ex girlfriend drove a Mercedes too. Um, got out of the vehicle, confront whoever bumped her, expecting to exchange insurance information. She got out, she was tired, frustrated from work. They got out, nice car, give me the keys. We drove off, she was standing in the middle of Highway 90. Okay. So that used to be common, it's not as common anymore but very easy target, right? Very easy system. Um, I use, I, one of my rules is I used to use banks that were inside of grocery stores. I didn't like going to ATMs. I didn't like being exposed going to the bank just because I grew up in a grocery store. We did withdrawals and deposits. I knew I was, I could be followed. So I like to go into a grocery store because people would think I'm grocery shopping. They're not aware I'm carrying money or, things like that. So I used to use banks inside grocery stores. They're not as common anymore. Um, when I use an ATM, I go inside the grocery store. Okay, I use Frost Bank. So HEB has Frost Bank ATMs in there. I go inside because nobody sees me doing that. That's for following me from inside the grocery store, right? Um, okay, I said a lot of crazy things happened to me. Three months ago, I was at Frost Bank right down the street. I was doing my thing. I pulled in slow to the driveway in the ATM. I looked around and right as I turned the corner, there's this old white pickup truck, like a work truck. And I thought, okay, maybe he's a landscaper. Maybe he's working on a building maintenance. Maybe he's fixing something. There's a guy in an old white pickup truck and pay attention. Turn around to the back of the bank to the ATM. There's a car parked in the ATM. It wasn't using the ATM machine. It was parked there blocking it. So I pulled up and I looked and there's a lady on the phone. And she's sitting on the phone and she's talking and talking. And then she looked up and noticed me and she moved out slowly. I don't pay attention to anybody behind me. I'm watching this lady move. I said, I didn't see her use the ATM. She kind of just pulled up slowly and she pulled to the exit and she parked there. Okay. So, of course, usual me, I know what I'm doing. Pull up to the ATM, stick my card in, I withdraw money. I'm going to give out my way. You can't get me. I teach classes on this. 
<laughs> so I use the ATM and people are still parked there. I'm like, you didn't withdraw money. You're parked at the exit. This guy's still parked there. And I finally get a good look at the guy. When I turn out of the ATM, I see he's on his phone. Maybe they're talking to each other. So I start recognizing things. I said, man, this can be an issue. So I just call the non-emergency non number of Sugarland PD. Hey guys, I'm at Frost Bank next to HEB on Highway 90. I'm just a couple minutes from the police station. I think I recognize a bank juggling situation happening right in front of me. It's happening to me. I think they're going to follow me. They put me through. Um, officer gets on the phone, says, where are you? What kind of vehicle are you driving? We're going to stay on the phone with you. I want you to update me where you are. I said, great. What do you want me to do? So we want you to drive down Highway 6. We want you to drive to First County Mall and drive the big circle around the mall. Keep telling us where you're at. Okay. So I'm down here, get on the highway. I start driving. Sure enough, they start following. I said, okay, I think, I think I'm right. I think this is what it is. Um, he goes, just drive to the mall, look for a parking spot. So I drive all the way to the mall. I get to about, I drive up, to, everybody's familiar with First County Mall, right? drive up to the big circle around the mall. I get to Dillard's, I say, I'm at Dillard's, I'm in a white Jeep, um, I'm by myself, and there's two vehicles behind me. They said, we're gonna have you drive to the back by the Dick's Sporting Good and come back around towards the food court. I said, okay, because we're gonna intercept those cars. We want you to keep driving. I just drove slowly, like I was looking for a parking spot, and then sure enough, six patrol cars pull up on them. They told me, keep driving. So I just drive off, I come to the office. I didn't hear anything. And about two days later, an investigator calls me and said, look, they didn't technically rob you, didn't charge you with anything, but these guys fit a description and profile that we've been watching and looking for. And we can link them to other crimes. Good job. Right? But it's that simple. It just happened down the road. On a, on a lunch break, I was going to, you know, I just needed some cash just to have to get about my day. And it just happened down the road. We're right here. Things are happening here. Right. So look again, be aware that that's just because I'm not that I'm paranoid, but I want to know everything else going around me. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about who's around me. If I'm alone. I'm fine. You know, I live, I live with my dog. That's all I need to kind of watch out for me. Um, I don't really talk about guns. A lot of questions I get are about mace and pepper spray. How many people carry mace and pepper spray or anything like that? One, two, three. Why aren't y'all carrying anything to defend yourselves? Um, brass knuckles are now legal. Somebody showed me a, a punch in the hallway. I, I don't think she's in here. She carries a punch on a keychain. Um, pocket knives are legal, right? Will you ever get a chance to use one of these? Probably not, right? They've got a gun. Are you going to pull your pepper spray? Um, now, if they're unarmed, they're trying to get you, yeah, you have a chance, right? You can use it because when you have a chance, your goal is to get away. Your goal is not to harm them and punish them for trying to get you, right? Some women I know are like that, right? One, one girl I know, she said, I'm going to pepper spray him. When he's down, I'm going to kick the crap out of him. I said, good, but don't do that. Your job's to get away. Um, pepper spray. There's anybody ever been sprayed with pepper spray or mace? Man, you guys are missing out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not only do I teach, I train with law enforcement for fun. People think it's crazy. I train with them for fun because I want to know what bad things are happening out there so I can protect myself and people I care about. I can teach people what to do. Part of that training is we get sprayed with pepper spray and mace. If you fall asleep in class, you get maced. I've been maced so many times I'm used to it. It's sad. The instructor will come up to me and my head will be down and will squirt me and I won't feel it. And everybody else in the room will start coughing and wheezing and I kind of know, okay, I, just, I, I think I just got maced. Um, mace, it's, it's not that bad. You probably smelled it at one point in your life and it irritated you, but it wasn't bad. Pepper spray is the most horrible thing on earth, right? If you've ever smelled it or you've ever been hit by it, it's the worst thing. It's, um, you know what it is, pepper, it's propellant and it's oil, 
But the pepper's so strong, your body has an involuntary reaction. You cannot control your body anymore. Imagine what that feels like. Your eyes clamp shut. You can't control it. No matter what you do, no matter if you hold your eyes open, you tell your brain, fight, 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 open your eyes. They won't open. They just clamp. It's that. It's an involuntary response. That's why police officers use it and riots. It's why they use it against attackers and perpetrators because your eyes clamp shut. You're breathing. You start having difficulty breathing. Your nose burns. Your throat burns. Everything's on fire. Okay. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And it lasts for five to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on how strong the pepper spray is. Okay. What can go wrong? The wind's blowing the wrong direction. You get the pepper spray. Right. Um, but this is a little bit about pepper spray and, and um, versus mace. And I, I can send you this, but uh, Valerie, you know, my cousin Patrick, we gave um, my other cousin Patrick's sister a vial of pepper spray. And one day she said it wasn't working. So Patrick and I were at his house and she's like, it's not working. It's not working. And Patrick opened the door and he sprayed it and he shut the door. The draft pulled it in. Pat got the worst of it. He got it in his face and and started yelling. And I was at the, I was at the very back of the room. So I was like, uh-oh, don't do that. Right? And sure enough, I smelled it. By the time you smell it, it's too late. I smelled it and I turned around, my eyes clamped shut. Dang it. Right? <laughs> and then I was like, the bathroom's around the corner. <laughs> I mean, all down the hallway, right? Bumped into a couple walls. Nothing I can do, right? If it backfires on you, it's going to be bad. If you use it in a house, during an open house, it's going to be bad. Use it in a hallway, you spray it, where can you go? You can't run through it, right? So think about when you're carrying things like this. Um, also, the effective distance, right? How far does pepper spray spray? Five feet, ten feet, depending on how good it is. Pepper spray expires. Keep that in mind. If you carry it, it has an expiration date. If it's ever gone off or it's ever leaked, if you see some residue around the nozzle, throw it away. Get another one. It's an oil-based propellant. Okay, It holds the peppers together, but makes it sprayable like a mist, like your perfume or cologne. Air spray bottle, they clog, right? Pepper spray clogs. Stafford PD, they had an incident where they're chasing somebody. They pulled out their pepper spray and tried to use it. It was clogged. The guy got away. But it was clogged because they'd used those pepper spray in other incidents or in other trainings and never replaced it. Right? These are on Amazon. And the reason why I show these is because some people, they want a non-lethal option. These are pepper spray ball guns. They spray a projectile. Or they shoot a, a, a ball that hits somebody and blows up and creates a cloud and, and it works that way. But if you're using something, your job is to get away. You want to create the most distance possible. Well, I'm doing that now, but I got a spray. The further away I move, the less effective it's going to be. Right? But it's going to be effective near me because it's the same distance for me. It's arm's length. But from them, I move back 10, 15 feet. I'm that far. I'm going to start running. Right? But if you want to use something, if you want to use a pepper spray, um, this is an option we get asked about a lot in class. Um, this is a quick slide. I know this doesn't relate to what's happening, but it relates to what we do every day. Um, how many people hold open houses? Most of us, right? Where do you usually stand in the open house? What room? Hmm? Kitchen? What's in the kitchen? Didn't think about that, right? Um, how many exits do you have in a kitchen? One way out? Is there a back door? Okay. When you're doing an open house, I want you to stand somewhere where you have multiple exits. Don't block yourself in the kitchen. If you have time or if you can talk to the seller, you can remove something. Remove anything that can be a knife or anything that can be used to harm you. Right. Um, ask the seller, would you mind if I put those in a closet somewhere or if I, if I brought some uh, Tupperware 
containers would you buy? And I'll use gloves. I'll just put them away just because I don't want those out there during, during an open house. Very common situation, right? It's just preventative. It's preventative. Thinking ahead, right? What are we walking into? What kind of situation are we putting ourselves in? Um, there's, what would you do? I'll ask you that. What would you do? You're in an open house or in the kitchen. A stranger walks in. He opens the door and he pulls out a knife. Think about it. It's okay to think about it. You're in a classroom. You're safe. You don't want to think on the you don't want to think on the spot and have to use your jeep to crush a guy between your door and your car, right? But think about what you would do in a situation in an open house. When you walk through an open house or you walk through a, a home before you do the open house, look at where the exits are. Look at where the back door is. Do you have to run through a garage? You have to run through multiple rooms. You have to run through a hallway. Where can you get stopped or blocked? Think about that. If you run in the backyard, where's the back gate? Where does it lead to? Is it locked? Okay. Can you get through that gate? What lead you back to the front of the house where the guy can just run back to the front door and try and intercept you? Those are things to think about just kind of on the job out there during an open house. Um, you can always defend yourself. Don't get that wrong, right? Your job is to survive. You're not the bad guy. Um, you can always defend yourself. There's, you know, you made a conscious decision. This is, I stole this from the class I teach, but you can always make a conscious decision to defend yourself by any means necessary, right? You're the victim. Okay? Most likely, if somebody's doing something bad to you, they've done bad things to other people, and they're probably going to have a record. Okay? Um, you're, you can use deadly force. What's deadly force? Think about we're in the kitchen. Right? The guy grabs a knife. There's an island. He's on the other side with the knife. I'm, on, I'm staying away. I'm staying on the other side of the island. Right? He moves there. I'm going to move opposite. There's a stove behind me. If there's a skillet or a gas plate or grill or something on that, that stove, I'm going to grab it. Okay? And if I can't get to an exit, I'm going to use it to hit him. You can defend yourself by any means necessary. Okay. Now, in my other class, I talk about the repercussions of defending yourself, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Somebody's got a knife. They're trying to hurt you. Grab what you can and use it. Okay. I talk about playing in the skillet and killing them. What's going to happen to me after I kill them? It's going to be in the news. Realtor kills intruder with the skillet, right? But what could legally happen to me? Right? We saw it with O.J. Simpson. He had a wrongful death lawsuit against you, and it wipes you out financially. But in these moments, you have to defend yourself by any means necessary, whether it's using your car to get away, using your car if you, they block you in, you've got to ram them, and you feel like you're in danger, and they're definitely trying to get you, you can ram them. If you're in an open, if you're in an open house by yourself and they pull a knife out, you need to get away or you need to defend yourself so you can get away. And everything around you can be a weapon to do so. Um, you throw a butcher block out. But if it's, it's the only thing you've got to use to throw, don't just throw it right away. Because if you miss, you're, that's the only thing you've had. Right? But look, you've got to just kind of take that opportunity if, you, if you're in that situation. Um, that's kind of all I had. I just wanted it to be about an hour for you guys. Do you have any questions or Things that you're thinking through, things that you experience. I don't. I like people to share experiences. I share my experiences so you you understand what happens, right? People think, oh, he teaches a class, nothing happens to him. No, I teach a class because everything's happened to me. If you've known me on Facebook for years, you see all the stupid things that have happened to me, and the, not that it was the best thing, but during COVID, nothing happened to me because I was home, <laughs> right? So. Um, Not as cautious as my wife in raising my daughter. So I always go out of the car, 
check this when you leave it, whatever. I'm just too cautious. She's real cautious. Uh, for example, many years ago, I was up, uh, you know, went to show a rental to a plane. She was trying to fly you to the next car. About 6 7 dark. Mm -hmm. I go and meet a, a renter out there to show a uh, like a condo or something. He's right in the, uh, I, uh, I mean, I know that Chrissy, not a good thing. But you know, you know, it's not a good thing. You know, I told myself, I left that, like I said, no, not with the very smart. And, uh, I was telling John Morris, John was born friendly, I told him about that, I said, So sometimes we despite ourselves, we get ourselves out of the gym, but we tend to spin it on um, a lot of things. But you're right, uh, like um, we're constantly looking at our phones, constantly. I'll be even run into a little post or something looking at my phone. Yeah. Uh, so you're right, I guess we just got to be uh, more cautious for ourselves and for our clients to protect uh, uh, ourselves and the, the property. Because uh, I, when I go to show properties, I find the, the doors are unlocked. Uh, and I find that at least once or two, three times a year of properties. And I'm always just the opposite. But I like them. Like today, I show properties. I was I'm always thinking about the other agent, you. So I want to do the right thing. So I'm going to spend the time to stop and go back a lot. I'm going to double check myself. So I don't want to. I don't want that to be on me because I wasn't thinking. So uh, you're right. You, we got to be cautious and think, and uh, not put ourselves in those situations. Mm -hmm. You're and from anywhere in the parking lot, if you come here at night, you can see that front entrance and you can see everybody coming out. Here, here's another thing. How many people drive home the same way every day? I mean, I'm guilty, right? I want you to think about your route. And I want you to think about how many turns you're making before you get home. Okay. The reason why is I want you to add more turns if it takes you a couple minutes longer. Something my dad did and I didn't understand when I was young, but it's because of the grocery store and we're afraid of being followed. But when I go home, I go through the back of my neighborhood and it's a longer drive. I've got to make all these turns, left and right turns. If somebody's following me, I know before I get home. I know not to turn on my driveway. Okay, so think about that. Now, 
And normally when I leave here, the first thing I do is I'm going to go to the They can see you very quick. You walk out of the building, and so many people have to get around. So many parts. Right, good enough. I mean, part of the reason why the guys chop up and shoot these people in the mob and then cut them in the arms. But the way it happens, more conscious. And that's what we're trying to get across: is just be more conscious of what's going on around you. Right? They're gonna. If you're a hard target, they're gonna wait for the next person. They're looking for the easiest opportunity, unless they're just desperate. And they've got to get something quick, right? Because they just did a robbery down the road, and they're now here, and they know they've got to get out of the area quick. But the harder of a target you are, the more conscious you are about the actual things, the harder it is for them to take advantage of you. And I got, I got, uh, you know, and I was in town today. It's just a few weeks ago. So every time I drive in from my neighborhood, I have a bike in the back. That bike, they see is an expensive bike. I have to be careful. But uh, if somebody's following me in the neighborhood, I usually take a few different routes to make sure they're not following me directly from my house. And if they do, I just go out of the way. But uh, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I was coming home. It would be dark. I noticed a car down the street kind of slowly driving around. So, you know, what I do, I pull into my driveway, they pull into my twice car. They were just sitting there. I had my foot on the brake. I never stopped the car. I never, uh, you know, got out of my car. I put it in reverse, and I had my foot on the brake. It felt like two minutes. It couldn't have been two minutes. They drove away. They were there to see And I had no clue. I listened to myself. Yeah. I said, just be aware because if I didn't know they were down there, I would have never known they were in my house. That would be a key. The thing is, we're always on the phone for the future. But yeah, you that's and that's the thing when once and it it's you got to get your mind to notice, right? And so when I was a kid, I left the grocery store. I'm a boy, right? I read car magazines. I knew what models and what horsepower and all this stuff. And so my dad used I used to sit in the back of the truck and I'd look in the back and I'd watch who's following us. I memorize the color and the make and model of every car and I recognize headlights. And I knew who was following us too long. I told my dad, yeah, that car's been behind us since we left. It's been 10 minutes. You know, and so I, I consciously do that now because of the way I was raised. When I'm driving in traffic, I'm constantly looking behind me. Right. And that's why I said reevaluate your, your route home. Because right? so, when I'm going home, with, when I'm within five minutes of home, I start paying attention to how many, how many cars are still following me. I drive down Highway 6. It, there are a lot of cars going to follow, but when you start taking extra turns and those cars are still following, okay, are they my neighbors? Start taking more turns, okay. You know, eventually, how, how, how much are you going to follow me? I feel like, if I feel like you're following me, I'm going to turn into a gas station. I'm going to go, I'm going to go somewhere else. Right? I'm going to see if they're still following me. I'm going to pull into Home Depot. You know, I'm going to change my route. But just, it's, we've got to be more aware and alert what's going on around us that's that's just it whether you're driving whether you're walking through a parking lot whether you're doing an open house um, even before you get to that open house when you're doing showings right you're going to a, a neighborhood you don't know to a, a lead that you never met right you've got to be more cautious especially now right the president of NAR is from Texas in our last four speeches she mean, she mentioned realtor safety four times tells me something's going on okay statistically for 2021 stats for crimes against realtors went down I don't know what's happening now 
Okay, but for, for somebody to mention it that often and then for HAR to all of a sudden want to get me involved in safety training, there's, there's things happening out there. The reason why I start teaching um, or the reason why I started looking for a class is because last year there was two guys targeting Asian female realtors, my friends, find them out to look at houses and they would open the door and he'd go in, he'd pull down his pants. We didn't know what his intent was, but and I hated it. They sent me pictures of him with his pants down. And I immediately called him. What happened? Give me the phone number. Give me all the information. We're going to go follow a police report. We went down to HPD substation to follow a report. And they said, come back in two to four weeks when we have some time. Here's a phone number. We'll call it, make an appointment. We don't have time right now. You know how much details lost in two to four weeks? So I came here, I paid five dollars, I ran a report in that phone number. I got his address, I got vehicles registered to him, I got family names in the same address. And we waited like six weeks to go follow a police report. And by then it had happened to two other agents I knew. Okay. And how quick and and you know, there's I'm discussing it with HAR, how quickly can we get this information out to realtors? let them know this is happening. And there's a legal side of it. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work out, but we're innocent until we're proven guilty, right? Can I blast the guy and his phone number out there to all these agents to watch out for this? I mean, is there some sort of discrimination that can happen to us for doing that? So there's a lot of things we've got to figure out. But I mean, the, as a, when I go to church a lot, business owners are there. It's not a day, two or three months, some sort of got that happens a lot. Yeah. I used to think it was every, when you hear it about six or seven times, that's where it drives. But just there's some hype about that. Yeah. Well, truce. Okay. Yeah. True story. When I was a new agent, again, Val knows my cousin. Um, I was a brand new agent, first year. I was showing my cousin a house near Sweetwater. And we're inside, and as we go inside to look at the house, my cousin's wife locks the front door. Why is she locking the front door? Um, we walk through the house to start looking, and next thing I know, she yells. The guy had jumped the fence and was trying to kick in the back door. And then I hear all this noise at the front door. Somebody is trying to kick in the front door. There's three people trying to break in the house while we were there. I mean, stuff happens. Who would think a home invasion during a real estate show? I think the possibility is not that possible. At least I'm sure we know more power here as much about it now. But you hear about it five, six times a year that happens. It, 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 it gets. It's getting very sensitive to the members and they feel very like they very keen to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So But you're right about the route, try this route, do this route. That's a lot of Yeah, I mean there's there's so many little steps that we can take is um there's so many little steps that we can take as agents that make things harder for people trying to target Let's us. See, you know, Oh no, all those lessons, the person is the elder. Mm -hmm. I guess this I was on the phone with her and she was the most um she was so I didn't think that was like the most important work with the elder to me. However, she did not show up she had been Yeah, I'm not 
We don't like to go on course and get in and get out of that car in the rain, cold night, and the guards figure out to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. It's like my situation at Denny's, right? I knew something was wrong the whole time, but I just, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, you know. We put ourselves in this. We do. Sure. Those things. 